Chapter 12, High-Risk Perinatal um, Care Gestational Conditions. Let's discuss the danger signs of pregnancy. Um, these are things that you would want to discuss or report to your doctor um, if you see these signs. Um, visual disturbances, diplopia, blurring or spots, headache, severe, sudden or continuous, edema above the waist, especially in your face or fingers, rapid weight gain, pain, severe abdominal pain or epigastric pain, any signs of infection, vaginal bleeding, no matter what or however slight, vaginal drainage aside from your normal mucus, muscular irritability or convulsions, absence or decrease in fetal movement once the fetal movements are felt. Hypertension. Hypertensive disorders are some of the most common medical complications of pregnancy. It occurs in approximately 5 to 2% of all pregnancies. Hypertensive disorders are a major cause of maternal and perinatal morbidity and mortality worldwide. The four most common hypertensive disorders are 1. Gestational hypertension, 2. Preeclampsia and eclampsia, 3. Chronic hypertension, and 4. Preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension. This information is in your textbook on page 302. Pathophysiology of gestational hypertension. You have a generalized vasospasm and vasoconstriction leading to a loss of plasma protein in the interstitial space, which is your edema and hypovolemia, that typically starts after the 20th week of pregnancy through the 48 hours postpartum. Hypovolemia results in decreased perfusion to major organs, including the placenta. The cause is unknown. This condition is seen most often in prima gravidas, particularly those younger than 20 or older than 35 years of age. It occurs 5 to 10 percent of all pregnancies, more common in women of lower socioeconomic groups with poor nutritional status. Gestational hypertension is a disease process unique to pregnancy and the only known cure is delivery. Signs and symptoms of gestational hypertension. The classic signs are edema of the waist, noted weight gain, hypertension, proteinuria. Gestational hypertension is further subdivided by the severity of the symptoms and the effects on the major organ system. Let's discuss mild preeclampsia. In mild preeclampsia, your blood pressure rises 30 systolic to 15 diastolic over previous baseline or 140 over 90 or greater times 2 at least 4 to 6 hours apart but within a maximum of one week period. Weight gain of more than 2 pounds a week, proteinuria of 1 plus or greater, edema especially around your eyes, face, and fingers, hyperreflexia of 3 plus, central nervous systems, possible mild headache, lot slight irritability, intrauterine growth retardation is, is also present. Severe preeclampsia consists of all of the same symptoms as mild preeclampsia plus two of the following. You can have a blood pressure rise of greater than 160 over 110 on at least two or more occasions, at least six hours apart, proteinuria 2 plus to 4 plus, generalized edema, deep tendon reflexes, oliguria. You can have central nervous symptoms such as severe headache, visual disturbances, elevated serum creatinine, thrombocytopenia, marked liver um, enzymes that are elevated, epigastric pain, and severe IUGR. Eclampsia is the presence of seizures in the woman with preeclampsia, tonic clonic seizures, many theories as to why the exact pathology is not understood. Health syndromes characterized by hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. It is a serious condition. The cause is unknown. Usually develops in 27 to 37 weeks gestation. It can happen at 25 weeks. Health syndrome is a life-threatening condition to the mom and fetus. HELP syndrome affects the fetus, premature delivery of the placental separation, life-threatening to mom and fetus, as I said. Only way to confirm is through blood work. This is a very serious condition, more commonly seen in older white multiparous women. Etiology arises out of changes that occur with preeclampsia.
assess for deep tendon reflexes, hyperactive reflexes, plus three or four, for signs of high blood pressure, also proteinuria by dipstick, clean catch, or 24-hour urine, which is defined as a concentration of greater than 30 milligrams per deciliter of two random specimens at least six hours apart. Remember, if you have a patient on max sulfate drip for seizures, you will also assess the neural status frequently. If there's a decrease in deep tendon reflexes, this is a sign of toxicity. If there's a decrease in urinary output, this is also a sign of toxicity. You're constantly checking your neural status, your deep tendon reflexes, and your urinary output if you have a patient on max sulfate drip. These are just charts showing the, when you're assessing for protein in the urine. It just shows trace urine and then it shows negative and then plus one, two, three, and four. These are pictures of someone assessing for deep tendon reflexes. When you have any mother who's pregnant who has any type of hypertension disorders or preeclampsia, eclampsia disorders, the goal is to maintain uterine placental perfusion and prevent seizures. Home management, absolute bed rest and uh, with bathroom privileges except for doctor's appointments. Have the patient weigh daily and repeat, report greater than two pound gain. Instruct to check urine daily for protein. She wants to ins be instructed to report any visual disturbances, headache, nausea, vomiting, hyperreflex or convulsions, epigastric pain, oliguria, decreases or absent fetal activity, vaginal bleeding or abdominal pain, reinforce high protein diet, limit salt intake, maintain minimum of 35 calories per kilogram, and reinforce that bed rest. Remember the goal is oxygen to that fetus. Hospital management. If mild preeclampsia progresses to severe preeclampsia, hospitalization will be necessary. We'll monitor the, the pregnant mom, monitor her LLC, blood pressure and vital signs continuously. Place her on a fetal monitor. Left lateral side position, absolute bed rest with side rolls up. Quiet environment, disturb as little as possible. Slowly with hourly outputs and check for protein. Deep tendon reflexes every hour. Decreasing deep tendon reflexes is an indicator of mag toxicity and impending seizures and worsening of preeclampsia. What are we going to do? IV administration of max sulfate for prevention of seizures. Give as an IV drip. Monitor lab values. Monitor for toxicity. Urine output less than 30 mils an hour. Respirations less than 12. Absent DTRs. Decelerations of the fetal heart rate. Have an antidote ready. That is calcium carbonate at the bedside. If seizures do occur, stay with the patient. Call for help. Turn to the left lateral side. Apply 10 liters mask O2. Do not place anything in the patient's mouth. This is a chart with helpful hints if you have a patient receiving mag sulfate. Fetal assessment. For fetal assessment, you'll do daily fetal movement counts, non-stress testing, biophysical profiles once or twice weekly until birth. This provides information and detailed assessment of developing fetus in response to stimuli, often used in the last trimester. Depending on the needs of the infant, you may have a consultation with specialists, perinatologists, maternal fetal medicine, neonatologists, oral antihypertensive may be needed, ongoing monitoring, and corticosteroids such as betamethasone. And remember, betamethasone is used to enhance the fetal lung maturity. Let's discuss intrapartum nursing care. Care is directed at identifying fetal heart rate abnormalities, prevention of maternal complications, uterine contraction monitoring, assessing for signs and symptoms of placental abruption, vaginal bleeding, head-to-toe -to -toe assessment of all body systems, patient and family education, rest, quiet, low stimulation, and medication. Emergency equipment. The woman with severe preeclampsia should have the following equipment at the bedside at all times. O2, suction setup, calcium gluconate, Ensure patency of her IV. This information is found in your textbook on page 310. So our goal for mom is the prevention of seizures and keeping the mom and baby safe. What do we do to accomplish this? We keep blood pressure down, quiet environment, calm environment, constant and ongoing assessment, assess max sulfate drip, 
um, assess the woman for signs and symptoms of toxicity, safety equipment at the bedside, call light within reach, and emergency birth pack at the bedside. So some emergency medications for the woman with high blood pressure. Hydralazine is an intravenous medication for quickly lowering severely high blood pressure during pregnancy. It has a vasodilation effect. Labetalol is a beta blocker, also an intravenous medicine for quickly lowering severely high blood pressure. Um, lowering the blood pressure too much or too fast can reduce the blood flow to the placenta causing problems for the baby, so you have to be very careful when you're using this medication. This information is found in your textbook on page 314. Nifedipine is sometimes used in late pregnancy to control moderate to severe high blood pressure, calcium channel blocker. Maternal effects are um, headache, flushing, and minimal, it has minimal fetal effects. This information is also in your um, textbook, page 314. Max sulfate is used to prevent seizures due to eclampsia during pregnancy. It is usually given through a vein intravenously or injected into a mus muscle intramuscularly. Treatment to prevent seizures is usually continued for 24 hours after delivery. You can find this information in your textbook, page 310 to 313. This picture depicts the Z-Track method of Z-Track IM injections. Calcium gluconate is used um, for magtoxicity and is also used in the management of cardiac arrest for hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia, or hypermagnesemia. As we know, chronic hypertension affects approximately 4 to 5 percent of all pregnancies. Non-Hispanic black women are much more likely to, likely to be affected. Other risk factors are age and obesity, related uh, effects on pregnancy, placental abruption, superimposed preeclampsia, and increased prenatal mortality. Fetal effects, uh, IUGR, and preterm birth. Chronic hypertension. Ideally, treatment begins before conception. Lifestyle changes, um, stop smoking, drinking, diet that includes a maximum of 2.4 grams of sodium daily. Um, ACE inhibitors are teratogenic to the, to the uh, pregnancy, to the infant, or to the fetus. Um, Aldamet is most recommended for treatment of chronic hypertension during pre pregnancy. So if you have chronic hypertension, you need to seek treatment with your um, physician that treats you for your hypertension if you become pregnant. Hemorrhagic disorders in pregnancy are medical emergencies. Maternal blood loss decreases the oxygen carrying capacity, which puts the in, uh, fetus at risk. Miscarriage is also known as a spontaneous abortion, pathophysiology, termination of pregnancy before the age of viability or 20 weeks gestation. There are two types of abortion, spontaneous, which is natural, and therapeutic abortion, which is an elective. Abortion continues. Signs and symptoms. The main presenting symptom is bleeding, which may or may not be accompanied by cramps and backache. Spontaneous abortions are classified as a threatened, Unexplained bleeding and cramping, the fetus may or may not be alive, membranes are intact, the cervix is closed. Inevitable, bleeding increases and the cervix begins to dilate, membranes may rupture. Complete, all the products of conception are expelled. Incomplete, some but not all of the products of conception are expelled. Missed, the fetus dies but remains in the uterus, may become septic. Medical management of a miscarriage. IV fluids and blood reflectant products, dilation and curettage, DNC, or dilation evacuation, or dilation and suction. Threaten, bed rest and sexual activity monitor. Inevitable, prompt termination of the pregnancy, D and E. Complete, no further intervention. Incomplete, prompt termination of pregnancy, D and E. Missed, if spontaneous evacuation of the uterus does not occur, pregnancy is terminated by method appropriate to duration of pregnancy. Monitor for DIC, which may develop in cases of fetal death after 12 weeks if products of conception are retained longer than 5 weeks. If sepsis occurs, antibiotics are started and treatment for septic shock is initiated. Nursing interventions post miscarriage, um, place the patient on oxygen, monitor for fluid volume de deficit, advise the patient about scant dark discharge that may be present, instruct on the use of no tampons or not having sexual intercourse until the bleeding has stopped. Um, 
um, you're going to instruct them to avoid pregnancy for two months and you're going to refer them for support group or grief counseling. Pre and post-op care for the patient having a DNC, you want to be able to answer the patient's questions. Um, you want a full patient history, vital signs as per the policy, monitor um, cardiac, uh, monitor abdominal and fundus, oxytocin is given after the DNC to prevent hemorrhage, methrogen contractions of the uterus, analgesics for pain, antibiotics, transfusions may be needed depending on blood loss, Rogan may be needed between, depending on the uh, woman's RH negative factor, and um, this is all found on page 320 in your textbook. DNC um, education continued. You want to also be aware of your hospitals um, and state policy regarding disposal uh, and legal implications of the fetal remains. Also, following a DNC, the woman is likely to be discharged home, so you want to make sure that you do proper patient teaching. Um, like I said, typically they go home the same day, so no sex or tampons for up to two weeks. She should have some cramping, so she needs to be aware of this. Assess her excessive bleeding. Clean the perineum after each BM and voiding. Change vaginal pads often. Shower, no hot tubs or baths. Um, take regular attempts. Um, teach her about the possibility of infection. Eat feeds high in iron. Um, and then she needs to be um, uh, referred for grief or um, counseling. Cervical insufficiency or incompetence um, it can be a cause of miscarriage, defined as passive or painless dilation of the cervix during the second trimester. Etiology, the cervix uh, cervical trauma during childbirth, dilation, DNC biopsy, or a congenitally short cervix diagnosed based on history, short labors, recurring loss of pregnancy, or a cervix that's less than 25 millimeters. Management is bed rest, um, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory agents, and uh, progesterone supplements. Cerclage can be done from McDonald's procedure where the suture is placed around the cervix below the mucosa to um, constrict the internal off at 10 to 14 weeks of pregnancy. And this information is on 321 of your textbook. Cerclage, the McDonald's procedure, suture placed around the cervix below the mucosa to constrict the internal off, must be removed electively, usually at 37 weeks gestation, placed early in the pregnancy, 11 to 15 weeks prophylactically. Placement may also be placed as a rescue procedure once the cervix has already started to efface and dilate. Bed rest usually for a few days. Avoid sexual activity until follow-up appointment. The woman should be advised to report signs and symptoms of retro membranes, strong contractions, five minutes apart or less, severe perineal pressure, and the urge to push. This information is in your book on page 322. This is just a picture of a cerclage being performed. You can click on the YouTube link provided and watch a uh, video of a cerclage performed. Let's talk about ectopic pregnancy. Um, fertilized eggs are implanted outside the uterine cavity, usually in the fallopian tube. About 2% of all first trimester pregnancies in the U.S. are ectopic. Uh, women are less likely to have subsequent successful pregnancies. It's the leading cause of infertility. Much less common, but can occur in the abdominal cavity. More than 55% occur in the ampulla, the largest part of the tube. You can find this information on page 322 of your textbook. Things that predispose a woman to ectopic pregnancies are STIs, tubal infections, contraceptive methods such as IUD and tubal sterilizations, and assisted reproductive methods. This is also found in your textbook on page 323. Every woman with abdominal pain, vaginal spotting, or bleeding in a positive pregnancy test should undergo screening for ectopic pregnancies. They should have a quantitative BHCG level, transvaginal ultrasound, and in BHCG levels that are 1500 to 2000, there should be a visible pregnancy to ultrasound. If the BHCG levels are 15 to 2000, but there's no visible normal uterine pregnancy by ultrasound, ectopic pregnancy should be considered. 
Ectopic pregnancy is undiagnosed. They present as referred shoulder pain, deep lower quadrant, one-sided acute abdominal pain. The referred shoulder pain is diaphragmatic, irritation from blood in the peritoneal cavity. The woman may present shocky. Um, what are the signs and symptoms? What are the early signs and symptoms of shock? An echemotic blueness around the umbilicus known as a colon sign indicates hemoperitoneum uh, or rupture of an um, uh, intra-abdominal ectopic pregnancy. This is a medical emergency. This is also um, talked about in your textbook on page 323. So how do we treat an ectopic pregnancy? Um, we can treat it with methotrexate to dissolve the tubal pregnancy. Methotrexate is an uh, anti-metabolite and a folic acid antagonist that destroys the rapidly dividing cells. Women must be hemodynamically stable. If not, we treat the blood loss, IV fluids, and factory blood cells if they're indicated. The mass must be unruptured and measure less than 3.5 centimeters in diameter on ultrasound. No fetal cardiac activity on ultrasound. And the BHCH level is less than 5,000. Women must be compliant, no alcohol or vitamins with folic acid consumption. That increases the risk of side effects um, and, and ectopic rupture. Warn the woman taking methotrexate not to take any medication stronger than acetaminophen because they can uh, mask the symptoms of tubal rupture. So we want to teach the woman about methotrexate. We want her height and weight for correct dosage. Um, we want to give it IM, side effects, conjunctivitis, stomatitis, gas pain, diarrhea, dermatitis, alopecia, increased liver enzymes, and bone marrow suppression. She wants to avoid sun exposure. No tampons, douching, or vaginal intercourse until released by her physician. Report to her physician any severe abdominal pain or bleeding. Weekly labs for BHCG levels until they drop below 15 million units per milliliter. This information is in your text on page 324. So surgical management um, depends on the location, cause, tissue involvement, future desire for pregnancy. Can do a tubal removal. This is a salpingectomy. Removal of the content from the tube and healing of the tube is salpingostomy. Not suture, left to close, uh, less scarring, referral for counseling for grief. The VHCG levels are checked. And no vaginal intercourse until released by the physician. Again, this is on three, page 324 of your textbook. This is a picture depicting a salpingostomy where they've left the openings for it to heal from the inside out. Nursing interventions for ectopic pregnancy we want to treat any signs and symptoms of shock. Prepare the patient for surgery as indicated. Educate the patient and family about disease process outcomes and surgery pre and post op if indicated. And assist with any referral for grief counseling if needed. Hedatiform mole is a molar pregnancy. Pathophysiology, one in a thousand pregnancy. The cause is unknown. It's an abnormal fertilization without a viable fetus. Returns from, uh, results from fertilization of an egg whose nucleus has been lost or inactivated. The nucleus of a sperm duplicates itself because the ovum does not contain genetic material. The ovum developed abnormally and instead the cells attached to the uterine wall forming vesicles that resemble a cluster of grapes. There's usually no fetus or placenta present. This is a picture of a hydatiform mole. Hydatiform mole, clinical manifestations, vaginal bleeding, significantly larger uterus or fundal height, HCG levels are higher than expected, positive pregnancy tests, hyperemesis present in many cases, signs of uh, hypertension in the early pregnancy, usually not noted until 20th week, Dark prune uh, colored vaginal bleeding, passage of vesicles may occur around 16 weeks. Management, most pass spontaneously. Suction curatage is safe, rapid and effective if necessary. Induction of labor with oxytocin or prostaglandin is not recommended. Medical management, evacuation of the mole is done by vacuum aspiration. Treat the blood loss or the anemia. Tissue is sent for pathology. ACG levels are monitored every one to two weeks until the pre-pregnancy levels are reached and monitored monthly for a year. Predisposes the patient to choriocarcinoma. Prevent next pregnancy for at least one year. Cancer is fed by the ACG levels. Nursing interventions. Reinforce discharge instructions. Monitor for infection. You want to teach this. Assist um, with referral for grief counseling. Placenta previa, pathophysiology, placenta is implanted in the lower uterine segment near or over internal cervical off. 
Classification is based on the degree of the internal cervical osseous covered by the placenta. Complete placental previa, marginal placenta previa, or low-lying placenta previa. This is in your textbook, page 326. Placenta previa incidence affects 1 in 200 women with term pregnancies. Etiologies, maternal age 35 to 40, multiparity with a history of prior suction, curative, smoking, or smoking. Clinical manifestations, painless bright red vaginal bleeding in the second to third trimester. Usually noted by the uh, ultrasound and a C-section will be planned. If not on ultrasound or a woman goes into labor prior to the C-section, there is a sudden onset of painless, bright red vaginal bleeding during the last half of the pregnancy. Soft, relaxed, non-tender uterus. Bundle heights usually greater than expected for gestational age. Interventions for placenta previa. We want to monitor uh, maternal bottle signs, fetal height, and cardiac pattern. We want to prepare for ultrasound to, to confirm the diagnosis. We do not perform vaginal exams. Monitor for bleeding. We want O2 at 10 liters mask, IV fluids, blood products as ordered. Prepare for emergency C-section. Fetal risk include malpresentation, preterm birth, fetal anemia, and congenital anomalies. This information is in your textbook, page 326. This chart gives a clinical picture of a patient in hypovolemic shock. Placenta abruption, pathophysiology, premature separation of the placenta after 20 weeks gestation and before the birth of the baby. Can be partial or complete separation. Can result from hypertension, abdominal trauma, cigarette smoking, cocaine abuse causes vascular disruption, history of previous abruption or preterm rupture of membranes and the factor V laden deficiency. Incidence is about 1 in 75 to 1 in 226 pregnancies. Etiology is detachment, detachment of all or part of the placenta from the uterus. Classification system is grades 1, which is mild, 2 is moderate, 3 is severe. You can find this classification system in your book on page 327. Signs and symptoms of placenta abruption. Dark red vaginal bleeding. However, if bleeding is high in the uterus or minimal, there can be an absence of visible blood. Uterine pain or tenderness. Uterine rigidity. Severe abdominal pain. Signs of fetal distress signs of maternal shock if bleeding is excessive. Placental abruption interventions. We want to monitor the mother's vital signs, fetal heart rate, cardiac output, uh, cardiac pattern, INO, bed rest, O2 at 10 liters mask, IV fluids, blood products if ordered, trendelenburg position. We want to decrease the pressure of the fetus on the placenta, put her in the left lateral side, uh, lying position, head to bed flat, prepare for emergency delivery. Let's talk about some surgical emergencies during pregnancy. Appendicitis, it's the most common non-obstetrical emergency during pregnancy. It occurs about one in a thousand pregnancies. Diagnosis can be delayed due to the position of the appendix. It's displaced and upward and to the right during pregnancy due to the abdominal pressure and the growth of the abdominal wall. Also, nausea vomiting is common during pregnancy and that makes this diagnosis difficult. This can cause a delay in diagnosis and the appendix can rupture. Your analysis and x-ray should be completed to rule out UTI and pneumonia. Uh, ultrasound is preferred due to fetal exposure. Laparoscopic surgery may be performed during the first and second trimester. Basic principles of caring um, for the patient following abdominal surgery. Care of the pregnant woman um, are different due to the risk of the fetus. Encourage the woman to express any fears concerning surgery. Perinatal nurses may collaborate with surgical nurses to assist with the care of the pregnant surgical patient. Take care to improve fetal oxygen during the surgical event. Position the woman on the OR table with a lateral tilt. Avoids compression of the maternal vena cava. Continuous monitoring of the fetal heart rate preoperatively, intraoperatively, and postoperatively along with uterine monitoring. Uh, remember, we want to always get oxygen to that fetus. Thank you, and this concludes Chapter 12.